بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وآله وصحبه أجمعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم So as is well known there was another man of African descent murdered by a white police officer which is not new in America. It's not something new. The issue that we have today, and I don't normally speak on these issues, but they have to be spoken on. They have to be spoken on. We can't be quiet. Reality is we can't be quiet. One of the problems that we have today as a society in America, Muslims, Africans born in America, Africans in America, whatever you want to decide to be called, is that we're very emotional. Emotionalism brings no success. Emotionalism brings no success. It doesn't solve the problem becoming emotional, screaming, protesting, posting on Facebook, grab your gun. None of that brings any real success. That's the reality. And that's what they expect us to do, to be emotional creatures. When in reality, we have to have an immediate action plan. What is the immediate action plan that we should be taking now in this situation? What should we do? A lot of people don't want to realize it. Let's look at the, uh, the results that some people are saying. Go protest. We've done that. People have protested. They've jumped in the streets. Nothing has changed. Arm yourself. Okay, that's, co that's cool. Arm yourself. That sounds nice. But the reality is that you will not win an armed resistance. It's the reality. The best plan in which will hurt them the most is not to go after the police and kill police. As Muslims, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't support that in reality. We don't support that as Muslims, go grab a gun, kill a police officer, eye for eye. Not in that manner, not in that cowboy manner. Any type of kisas or retribution in Islam has to be taken through the government. And obviously the government here is not going to take kisas on our behalf. It's not going to take retribution on our behalf. So that's cut out. You might as well cut that out. To think that you can grab a gun and go do some harm to somebody. That's not an Islamic viewpoint and it's not a safe viewpoint as well. The real pain that you can bring to this type of situation is economical. It's economical. One thing that people don't realize that which we should do why are we still going to the oppressor to seek help from? That makes no sense to ask the oppressor, the one who's oppressing you, to help you and save you from their brethren, to save you from the other oppressors who are hurting you. That makes no sense to go to the oppressor. And the sunnah of all of the prophets and messengers that we have that came before us, whenever the oppression from the oppressor became too great, whenever the oppression from the oppressor became too great, they always left, took their people and left. Because in reality, a system such as America cannot stand on its own without our economical support that we give to it. When we are one of the greatest, as they say, buyers in this country. We're one of the greatest buyers in this country. We purchase everything. If we took our wealth that we have, and we have a lot of wealth as Africans in America, and we left this country, it would hurt it more than anything else. It would hurt it more than anything else. But still, we want to live in their palaces, just like Bani Israel, the children of Israel, did. They didn't want to leave Pharaoh. They wanted to stay in Pharaoh's palaces and stay under Pharaoh's control just because of the fact that what? They got used to that. It takes some uncomfortability if you want to be successful. So the sunnah of the Bani Israel, what did Ibra Prophet Abraham and Ibrahim do? What did Prophet Muhammad saw? So all of the prophets and messengers left us a point of how to deal with this situation. Leave. And then everyone wants to ask next, well, where should we go? If you haven't been to Africa yet, you better go. Take you a plane once you're able to and go see that Africa is not what they show you on TV. That there are so many places that are willing to welcome us back into our society, or it doesn't have to be Africa. If you don't feel like you came from Africa, whatever your situation might be, why stay here and seek help from someone who doesn't want to help you? Until when it's going to be too late that it's going to be my brother, my sister, my son, your daughter, child that's killed in the streets? We're not safe here is the reality. 
So why stay in a place that we're not safe when there's safe lands that are willing to accommodate us? We have to be willing to be uncomfortable for a second and adjust to a new society, at least in a society where we will be safe. That's the reality. And again, many of us don't want to hear it. I think a lot about something, right? If anyone knows how the Black Panther Party started, Hugh P. Newton, right? Elders Cleaver and these guys, what did they do? If anyone knows. They got tired of seeing the little black children being hit by cars at that intersection. So they didn't go protesting. They took an immediate action plan. What are we going to do to fix the situation? We can't ask the oppressor to help us anymore. Obviously, they don't care. They put a stop sign there themselves. They went and put the stop sign there themselves. They took it down. They went and put it back up. They took it down. They went and put it back up. But now we have an option. We don't have to stay here. You have a passport. There's places that will accept you. We see so many brothers and sisters that's moving to Africa and they're showing us the pictures that they have. They're showing us their homes that they have. Africa is not a bunch of flies uh, flying around children's heads like they show you on the TV. And again, there's so many other places to be. So again, my question is, are we going to still be emotional and just talk about it? And then, you know, after a couple of days, we'll forget and they expect us to forget. After a few days, we'll forget about it. On to the next situation. SubhanAllah, they just killed a young, another black man. And it's already another one. This, and the, the one thing that's happening now is that we have social media, so we see it. This is not new. This is not new. So again, my question is to all of us. What is our immediate action? Not emotional, but action plan. Who is willing to make a step forward? And I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about grabbing our bags, grabbing our money, and going to invest in a place that we can be safe together. Because we're not safe here. And that's just the reality. Hada wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.